the working of a disciplinary population is even through the sexual identity formations. Because as the poet E. E. Cummings once wrote, not even the rain has such small hands. You know, because when, when we're, you're talking about this, the, the sexual identity deformations, I mean, these are formations which have crudely, crudely been cobbled together by people who are able somehow to wrap the thing around with a mantle of scientific legitimacy. And then are sent back to people on the idea that these are not constructions but are actually their natures. Yeah, so in other words, this is almost like a computer chip. You know, in other words, the, uh, the sexual identity formations, the sexual deployments, the deployments of sexuality are just like computer chips which are constructed in a laboratory with all kinds of nasty things mixed into it and then put back into people and they're told, you know what? That's your nature. And of course, most people believe it's their nature. Now the reason why the state apparatus will do that will be for purposes of, like I said, bringing benefit to the population. And also when they be, for calling the obedience of the population in. So take, let's, let's, take, let's take a look at some of these strategies. One of them he called the historization of women's bodies. The second one he called the pedagogization of children's sex. The third one he called the psychiatrization of perverse behavior. And the fourth he called the um, socialization of procreative behavior. Now, what did he mean by the historization of women's bodies. Well, very simply put, in the 19th century, one of the best ways to organize a population was to make sure that all of its women would basically understand that their main function in life and in being was to simply produce the next generation, to be child parents. And that's the way it was in the early days of the medical establishment. It basically told women, it basically uh, sort of like held women to the single task of reproduction. A woman was simply reduced to her uterus. That's why it's called the hysterization of women's bodies, to her uterus. And don't, and, and don't forget, uh, it was, in one sense, maybe it may not have been a, an entirely bizarre idea, at least the idea itself, because after all, uh, you know, the continents of the world in the 19th century really needed to be populated. 